Well, hey guys, it's Spiffy Guy, and I'm out here with another adventure. And if you can't tell by the orange hat, it's deer hunting season. I uh, I kicked up six on the way in, and then uh, I just heard two shots. So somebody's getting lucky, I guess. I'm at uh, Coover River State Park. If you couldn't tell by the uh, the little video of Lincoln Lake there, and we're out here looking for frost flowers. It's about 25 degrees right now Fahrenheit and uh, it's a bit chilly. I brought out the uh, the big digital SLR kind of janky on here with this uh, old video camera case. We're going to hike around the lake and then I think I might head over to uh, to the uh, inside the Big Sugar Creek area and uh, take a look. But uh, it's certainly beautiful out. I'm hoping the audio comes in because I put in a couple uh, little fuzzies on top of the camera here. But our goal, like I said, is wildlife photography at this point and uh, looking for frost flowers. And uh, we're going to get moving because it's chilly. It's cold. I got two layers on. I got a merino wool quarter zip and then a capelina too. And then my little... Uh, my little, uh, uh, what do you call this? Ecolator 3. Ecolator 3, which has no wind protection. So I might need to stick on the, uh, the wind shirt. But we're going to get rolling. That sun is coming up. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I don't know if you guys can see it, but up there... There's a buck. He came walking up. I got some decent shots. I'll stick them in right here. I'm hoping anyway. I was able to at least get to them. It's a nice thing about having that the big lens, you know, is you get that zoom. And he came walking up from over here. And he walked along all the way up the hill. I've heard about seven or eight shots so far. So I'm assuming that people are filling their tags. It is opening season, or opening weekend, I guess. So, very cool to see. I also think I got some decent shots of a woodpecker, the elusive woodpecker. I'm never gonna make it around this lake. All right, guys, so we're just kind of cruising along here. The trail uh, just skirts along the lake. It's a really great trail. It's about three and a half miles, and there's a lot of little pretty inlets, kind of like this thing, where you just kind of kind of come into the finger of the lake and then go back around. And I saw some, uh, some trees knocked down by beavers, but they look kind of old. But I'm wondering if this is a beaver dam. Uh, there's a lot of logs built up, and I'm going to, the trail goes over there, I think, so I'll check it out. And it looks like there might be a little slide. And then there's also, I don't know if you guys can see that, and we'll check it out once we get to the other side, but the disturbance that goes up that hill, I'm wondering if that's either just a game trail or if that's actually a beaver, you know, slide. Um, there's a lot of sticks and twigs around. I don't know. I mean, I've, like I said, I've seen the beaver action, or at least remnants. So I know the beavers are around here. Or at least they were. But we're having fun cruising along, trying to figure out the camera. It's a, it's a fancy camera. And, uh, you know, the idea is that uh, I'm not really entirely enamored with the camera I'm using now. The uh, Olympus TG5. And so, you know, I'm kind of opening options to uh, look for something different. That looks disturbed right there like a little inlet same up over there you can see on the sides there that that has been pushed aside or pushed up I don't know I'm not a beaver tracker 
So anyway, onto the camera. Um, really the jump from a point and shoot is gonna be to some sort of SLR slash mirrorless camera. And so I've been kind of looking at a few. I like the idea of the mirrorless because they're a lot smaller than the, uh, the SLR. And uh, you know, my SLR is, is pretty heavy, the D90. And there's some bulk that kind of comes along with it. And I'm not really sure how to handle that. I gotta come up with a system as to how I'm gonna carry the camera, you know, if I'm bringing an extra lens, extra batteries. And I don't particularly care for this, uh, this little side pouch. I'm trying to attach it to my uh, backpack. Uh, hip belt is just, it's jury rigged and it's not really the best, but it works for right now. And that's the idea is I wanted some place that I could put the camera quickly if I wanted to take my pack off and not have it swinging around. And that's kind of what the uh, that's kind of what the uh, little pack thing is for. I think probably what I would do is go to some sort of bag chest harness system. I know I can get the Peak Design capture system, which goes it's basically like a plate that goes on the bottom of your camera, and then uh, a receiver goes on your strap of your uh, shoulder straps, and then it holds the camera. The nice thing about that is it's quick and it's easy. It's there but there's no protection to the camera from the elements and that sort of thing. And anything I get needs to be weather sealed. It's actually kind of humorous that I came out here because my Facebook memory is me asking questions about my Olympus SH2 that basically got damaged by dust and trail use in and out of the pocket. So whatever I buy needs to be weather sealed. I kind of been looking at the, uh, the Sony uh, A6300 as well as the um, Panasonic G85, which is apparently very good for video, or at least better. Um, has some better features on body, stabilization, technical stuff, you know. Uh, the other one is the, you know, the granddaddy that just came out, which is the uh, Fujifilm X-T3. And that may, may just be more camera than I need. I don't know. But it is a beautiful day in the woods. It's a Sunday. All hail reverence to Mother Nature. We're gonna keep walking, check out this beaver thing. All right, just quick on the other side. I do think that this might be a beaver. It definitely slides all the way in. I, I'm looking close, but I don't see any actual tracks. It's just too muddy. Um, but that slide goes up here, and there was a tree right over there that's a little fresher, and you can see All along here, somebody has been working at it. So I kind of think that this is beaver. And if he's not lodging right over here, let's walk over there. Oh, I got attacked. You know, like I see a lot of, if you look in the water, you can see a lot of like little channels. And some of that debris has been moved out. And there's a lot of mud and walking on the edge right here. This is kind of fun. I would have loved to see seen a beaver. Yeah, this is a beaver dam. Cool. It's got to be. Look at all that mud. Yeah. Super cool. So, come out to Quiver River and find the beaver dam. I wonder if that's where he goes in right there. I don't know. It's kind of neat. He's got a nice little alcove back in here, blind you with the sun, so he can uh, be nice and sheltered. What, what preys on beavers besides humans? Um, maybe large birds of prey? What else? He's got to be fairly safe. I mean, it's Missouri. It's not like we got Kodiaks or anything around here. You know, just hillbillies.
Those beavers are a bit ambitious. That's a large tree. Oak, no less. It's interesting that it's uh, after nine o'clock and the sun is still not over all the hills. I can see there's a uh, one hiker over there because he's wearing blaze green, safety orange or safety yellow, whatever that color is. I guess it's sort of a greenish yellow. And the parking lot's back over there. So now we're headed in towards the um, the swimming area, which is at the uh, the other end of the lake towards the campground. And there was one car there. Uh, somebody was out hiking in front of me. And uh, they've already finished. So I'm meandering here, but I think we'll finish before lunch and then maybe we'll head into the big Sugar Creek area for a little lunch. So I got some new gear. I replaced my wool buff because I always lose them. And I find that the wool buff is one of the key winter pieces of gear. If you don't have one, they're definitely worthwhile. You can use a smog and that sort of thing, but the marina wool buffs are fantastic. And if you're super cold, they make like polar fleece ones and things like that. Also, I'm trying out some new boots. We'll take a peek. Those are Keen uh, Durand, I believe, mids. My uh, Targies, my Targi 2s, have become small. Uh, my toes are hitting on the end, which is really odd because these Durands are the exact same size. So I don't quite understand that. Um, but I did try the Targi 3s on at REI, and uh, they were too small. They felt really narrow in the toe box, which is odd, because Keen has really wide toe boxes. So we're going to try these out and see how they work. I hate to spend a whole ton of money on, uh, you know, mountaineering boots and that sort of thing. If these will do, you know, for climbing mountains. Which could happen. I'd like to think anyway. Look at that. Snow even. We uh, we got a few little light dustings here and there. And it's sticking around on the uh, south side of these hills. And we have more supposedly tonight and tomorrow. Maybe an inch. Not a whole lot. I walked up the, uh, the steps. Which I guess goes to the campground. I've never done this before. Up here. Apparently there's 118 steps. But there's three camping spots that have this uh, this little uh, canvas tent on them. One of them is open. The only thing inside is just it's just a canvas structure. So I don't know if these are special rentals or not. It's a nice view though. You know, of course, with all the once all the leaves come in, you wouldn't have the same view. But pretty cool, and I think so. It comes up there. And then I believe somewhere over here is the steps going down. Ooh, and there's a tent. Someone's camping. There's some RVs up here as well. I've never actually camped here. Should be pretty nice. We've got fishing, We've got a lot of trails. But why, uh, why pay? when you can just hike into the backpacker site. You know, it's vacant. Here you go. Lots of little woodpeckers. They're slowing me down. I gotta take pictures of them. So here we are up at the beach area. And uh, the clouds are starting to roll in. And the wind's picking up. It's a little chilly. Hopefully the wind's not too bad. I have uh, those little fuzzies that I put on to protect the uh, camera from wind noise. I'll put a picture in here. And I also picked up a, uh, an adapter for this camera so I could put a UV filter on it. Um, I like to put UV filters on lenses in order to protect them. And I didn't realize that they actually sold a UV lens you know, size for this camera. So I was worried about things getting scratched up. I think I might have one little scratch on the outside portion and since it's a sealed lens, it's not like you can, uh, 
you know, fix that or anything. So, but it's, uh, it's getting a little chilly. I might have to put my hat back on. The, uh, the hat is new. It is a, uh, I lost my old one. I have bad problems losing buffs and hats. And uh, hopefully the wind's not bad. It's a little icebreaker hat. It's kind of thin and small, so I'll probably lose it. But I might need a secondary hat in the deep of winter. We shall see, but it's pretty warm and it's comfy. You know, merino wool, it's comfy stuff. I don't know, it might, maybe it'll rain or snow. These clouds are rolling in. All right guys, made it back to the boat launch. There's a couple little red-headed woodpeckers playing with each other over there. So, if you wanna do this trail, you can pick it up at the boat launch. Right here, somebody else is on the trail. And uh, you can also pick it up down at the swimming area. And then up over there, which you guys probably can't see, that is um, a little schoolhouse trailhead, I want to think. It is. Anyway, there is uh, there's a couple places to hit it. It's a fun little trail. It's only like, I think, three, three to four miles. So not too bad. We're going to head over to Big Sugar Creek and then hike in to one of the campsites and have some lunch. All right, guys, so here we are at the Big Sugar Creek Trailhead. There is uh, two cars here, and there's a bunch of cars across the road. I don't know if that's overflow or, or what the deal is with that. Anyway, so I have a choice between the Big Sugar Creek and the Quiver River, either probably the North Loop, because that's four miles. So if you go down and you make a left, you're going to hit the Quiver River Trail. If you go down and make a right, you're going to hit the Big Sugar Creek Trail. And I think that's the one I'm going to do. It's got a um, couple different uh, campsites on it. Look, here comes a deer. There's two. I'm gonna zoom in. It's gonna make zoom in noises. I don't like zoom in noises. Well, stay safe, deer. It's like a welcoming committee. All right, let's get hiking. All right, guys. So we made it to the uh, to the campground, and uh, that's kind of what it looks like. Big old giant pile of rocks. There is a grate in there. I brought in uh, I brought in all this uh, grapevine bark because uh, it was all nice and fluffy looking and dry, and everything's all wet. So I'm only using the twig stove. So somebody actually left some twigs, so that might actually work. There's a few down things up there you know and look someone left their tent great land the solar guard plus i can assume that this is a high quality high quality tent so i'll have to figure out how to strap this to the back of my pack and haul it out don't leave your crap lying around uh, other than that i really haven't found a whole lot of trash which was kind of nice but uh, we'll get the old uh, stick stove set up and uh, go from there. Smoky. I'm very dry, but I'm only boiling up some ramen. I'm not really sure what to think about this stick stove. You know? I mean, it's alright. The feed port's really, really big, and things kind of have a tendency to fall out. But I guess I need to, uh, I guess, learn how to use it a little bit better and uh, not shove it full of sticks and slowly feed it, I guess. But this will boil up water fine. This is the uh, Expedition Research Grill. That's the, uh, the little small one. Um, the, uh, the stove itself, the Oahu or whatever it's called, 
a little Chinese knockoff. It comes with um, it comes with a little cross piece, but because the uh, the stove is warped a little bit, it, it's kind of hard to put on. And so if you're trying to feed it from the top down, then it gets in the way. So we'll just use uh, we'll just use the uh, grill, and that'll work fine. So the issue that I have with this particular stick stove is that the feed port is so low that everything you put in there is pretty much right down where the coals are. In all honesty, it should be raised a little bit like this. As you can see, just by raising that, all of a sudden my fire now is a lot higher. And I guess that's, you know, a design problem. So if the feed port though was, you know, maybe a half an inch shorter I think I'd probably get better performance and everything wouldn't fall out everything's all angled and wanting to just come out so anyway cheap stick stoves from China so we're just about done so that is uh, that's the bundle I gotta figure out how to attach this to the pack the bundle is actually bigger than the pack so I'm a bit irritated with people you know so I could probably, I got a paracord, so I could probably strap it to the backpack. Uh, I'll put the camera away in the camera case and then just kind of figure out how to secure it enough to walk out. I got um, about two and a half miles, maybe three, unless I go back the way that I uh, just came in, in which case that'll be about a mile. So I don't know, it's, it's about 1230 right now. So, clouds have moved in, the sun is completely gone now. Uh, weather doesn't call for any rain or snow, but you know, who knows, you know? It's all regionalized anyway. But anyway, I'm gonna eat up my ramen, and I got some crackers, and, and then, 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 you know, I'll be full. I'm gonna sit on my sit pad. All right, here's a little trick. So the Osprey Manta has, you know, the main pouch, and then it's got the uh, the little exterior. You can put a helmet and stuff in there. Pretty neat. But it also has a bladder pouch on a separate zip, which is actually super cool if you don't use a bladder. Um, well, I guess it's cool if you use a bladder, but uh, I don't use a bladder, so I can put my sit pad, um, my little stick stove, and my grills all down in there without having to open up the main compartment and mess around with that. So uh, it'll, it allows a good separation of gear. I mean, you could, I put my gloves in here too because they're kind of wet now and that way they're separated from the rest of my stuff. So a way to utilize the, um, the little bladder area without actually needing to use a bladder. So kind of cool. I just want to point out, I don't care if it's gonna rain, I don't care if it's gonna snow. If you have embers, put them out. Half of California is on fire right now. Seriously, put your darn fire out. Blankety blank. And clean your pot. All right, here's trash. I picked up some more trash. I went through the, uh, the grate. The leaves are probably covering a lot, but you know, I can only get what I can get. So there you go, there's my trash. I'm gonna pack that out. I don't know how much that weighs, but it's all wet. It seriously, it's all wet. Ugh. But I used a Canadian jam on it just to be secure that it's not gonna unroll on me. I'm not keeping those pads either. That's probably nasty. There's probably all sorts of Ebola on that. All right, it's dumb and ugly, but it works. And what's funny is, you know, normally I don't carry a whole lot of cordage. I might have a hank of paracord or, a, you know, bank line in there that's, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet. But um, I brought that whole giant thing of paracord because um, I was worried that I might have to retie the stupid camera case which has fallen off anyway um i think the better thing would be just to carry the camera and then if it is an issue just pat it inside the back of the pack anyway but so i just happened to throw in that whole thing of paracord so that worked out uh, it's ugly and i'm sure it's going to be a pain to hike out of here but i think we're going to go the long way it's one o'clock we can do it right punishment is good Clean up your damn campsites, people. All right, guys, so I just scared up a whole bunch of deer. They all went running off. 
I'm on the road, so the road kind of goes up uh, in between the two sections. So on one side you have the, uh, the Big Sugar Creek Trail, and then on the other side you have the Quiver River Trail North and South Loop. Um, I don't know, it's 1.30, so I'm thinking that that campsite I was at was not the first campsite, but the second one. And that means that I had walked probably two miles before, and so this walk out is only a mile, which is great, because this is really dumb, this thing. Can you see that? Yeah, it's it's kind of heavy and stupid. Anyway, I wanted to show this. Um, these are some shot cord. Uh, it's like eighth inch shot cord with... Um, uh, what do you call those things? I don't know, little cinches. And so I can put the Gorilla Pod up here. Now I did buy a new Gorilla Pod. I bought the the 3K one, which is the one uh, for the SLR, and it has the uh, the Gorilla Pod. Um, I heard something. It has the Gorilla Pod uh, ball head on it, and I really like it. Um, I'm not really using it with an SLR, but it's a lot more robust and it works a lot better getting around trees and stuff than the old little tiny small one and um, it fits right here so that was the idea I had um, I may try to modify this a little bit maybe put some uh, sow some grow grain in there and that way um, I can move them because this one's a little high but uh, that way I have the tripod right there it's easy to get off pull the camera out stick it on a tree do my little b-roll because it's all about b-roll apparently all about the b-roll yeah I don't know I've been out here for far too long. We're going to keep walking up there and we'll find the map. And then uh, I'll show you where we were. Alright guys, so we made it back to the car. All those people on the road are gone. And there's a couple new cars. So, alright. So this is the trail that I did. I swear there was two backpacking camps. There is not, apparently. So I hiked all the way up here. Got to backpacker number two. Then we hiked over here. Hit the road. And we came back up, which is where we're at. So... One backpacking camp there, two over here, so three and four right here. Backpacking camp number one, I am guessing, is if you take the Lincoln Hills Road all the way over here to the KK Trailhead, cross over the road, then that'll be backpacker camp number one. I like that one quite a bit. Um, my favorite one is actually backpacker camp number four. So if you're a beginner, Come out here, you can park right there. It's like less, it's like three quarters of a mile into here. And there's a little creek next to it um, that sometimes has water. So that makes it a little bit easier. And then if it's too cold or you're bugging out, whatever, it's not that far of a bail back to your car. You know, uh, this one, I guess, wouldn't be too bad, but this one's up on a hill. So you'd have to navigate that hill and then get on the road and come out at night. So, just some things to think about. Alright guys, so this pretty much wraps up our little day hike out here at Quiver River. I want to encourage you guys to get out and find some place that you can head that doesn't have hunting, so you're safe and you can hike during hunting season. Always make sure that even regardless where you blaze orange, and uh, pay attention to where the trails go. Sometimes the trails go near private property and somebody may be crossing that line a little bit. So just make sure that you're staying safe. Uh, the nice thing about the Big Sugar Creek area is this is fairly internal to the park as opposed to some of the other ones on the other side of Lincoln Hills Road where they'll be closer to private property. And including the one over on KK that goes out to the old camp has the lake. I have a feeling there's a lot of hunting going on around there. But anyway, had a great time with the camera. Uh, it was sunny this morning so we had a lot of good pictures. Not so much in the afternoon. It's a bit gloomy. So question of the vid would be how do you carry your digital SLR system? Do you do it, you know, just carry the camera? Do you use the clip system, uh, a chest pack? I'm thinking maybe a, a low pro kind of top loader because they come with their own little harness that would be separate from a backpack and that way you can put all your stuff right in front. I'm mean, use my hands a lot here. I don't know. So anyway, just think about that. Also, make sure to pack up your campsites take a little bit of trash out because you know we're all using this environment and it would be nice to keep things pretty and on that note on a maintenance note i just want to point out um i did a little clip if you subscribe you've probably seen it if not go check it out i am doing the uh, 2019 ozark trail challenge hike which is a fundraiser it's an 18 mile hike 
that's not going to be a challenge. The challenge is the money, and that's where I need some help from you guys. So the link will be down in the description if you got a couple bucks. It would be really great. If not, no biggie. Find a trail, get outside, because life is an adventure. So go out and have one. Thank you.